when we looked at bacterial um, reproduction, we talked about the process of binary fission, which was when bacteria basically divided and made clones of themselves. So all of the offspring from that original cell would be genetically identical. Um, and so when we look at it from that perspective, we think, well, there's no way that they can achieve diversity because all of the cells are exactly alike when they go through asexual reproduction. Achieving diversity isn't an issue for any of the organisms that undergo sexual reproduction because we get crossing over and independent assortment and these other processes that take place that allow for genetic diversity. That's why if you have siblings, you don't look exactly like your siblings because of those processes that are designed to increase diversity. But when we look at asexual reproduction, there's not a lot of genetic diversity that could take place. We could get mutations that may lead to expression of different phenotypes. But for the most part, if we're looking at vertical gene transfer, we, we don't get diversity. So then how do we do that? We have to look at horizontal gene transfer, HGT. Um, this is when we get the introduction of genetic material in um, organisms within the same generation. So we're not talking about, you know, parent to offspring. We're talking about um, members of the same generation, you know, living in the same area. Um, it is believed that we see horizontal gene transfer more often in prokaryotes. Um, but they can only transfer a little bit of this at a time. So along with mutations, this horizontal gene transfer is going to be a significant source of the genetic variation that occurs in prokaryotes. There are three processes or mechanisms that allow for horizontal gene transfer, and they are transformation, transduction, and conjugation. Transformation is when DNA is just taken up from the environment. So there's just some random DNA out there, and that's going to be taken in by that prokaryotic cell. We talked about transformation when we discussed Frederick Griffith's experiments a few videos back, where he had the heat-killed S strain or the pathogenic strain of the bacterium, and he put that with the rough strain, and now the rough strain was able to take up those genes and become pathogenic. That's an example of transformation. Transduction is when the um, bacteria is going to receive some genes by infection with a bacteriophage. So it's getting it from a virus. And we talked a little bit about this um, in the video on the viral life cycle. And then the third form is conjugation. And this is when the bacteria can use the uh, pillus or what we refer to as a conjugation pillus or a sex pillus to directly transfer genes between cells. And so that's what we're seeing here. So in this first example, this is transformation. There's just some loose DNA hanging out in the environment and that bacterial cell is just going to snap it up here and put it into its chromosome. Um, transduction here, it's being infected by its bacteriophage and then it's going to take that piece, we call that a, a prophage, where it takes that piece of genetic material and actually puts it in its chromosome. And then conjugation, usually this happens with the plasmid and that's what we're seeing here. We've got this plasmid and the genes on that plasmid are going to be trans uh, transferred into another cell directly through this tube, this um, sex pillus or conjugation. Uh, pillus. So those are the three mechanisms that prokaryotes can achieve um, genetic diversity. Conjugation can be a very important mechanism in bacterial cells achieving virulence. 
and also achieving antibiotic resistance. Um, these, um, for instance, that we have what are called R plasmids, and these are the names given to plasmids that um, have information that code for uh, a particular resistance to antibiotic and so they're called R plasmids or resistance plasmids. Um, they also, these genes also control conjugation. So that means that a, a bacterial cell that has one of these R plasmids that makes it resistance, resistant to let's say penicillin can then um, transfer that plasmid to another cell and now that cell has you know uh, proteins that make it antibiotic um, resistant to penicillin so um, this is a very important mechanism in antibiotic resistance and we'll talk more about resistance um, as we get into chapter 14 but um, that's why it's important, you know, if you have a bacterial infection to finish all of those antibiotics, to kill all of them. So they're not able to swap this DNA to transfer this, um, these R plasmids between one another. So it's very important that, you know, we don't give them the opportunity to share this genetic information.